simple and may sound intimidating but it's not so I'm a KitchenAid mixer two cups of warm water dump it in there and a packet of yeast if you've never baked with yeast before it can sound scary but it's really not the key is when you put the yeast into the water full packet in there we're gonna add some sugar to feed the yeast and let it get bubbly and that's how you know it's active. So you just have to be patient. It usually doesn't take long, but to that we're, we're adding, I'm reading my recipe because I don't have it memorized. I usually do about a little over a tablespoon-ish of sugar. I will post the recipe that I use and I kind of modify it, but you can use her exact recipe because it's really good. I make this bread all the time. It's awesome. So, you're just gonna sit here, wait for it to get bubbly and active. I'll show you what that looks like, but it generally takes five to 10 minutes depending on how warm your water is, how warm it is outside. You want your water temperature to be uh, like 100-ish degrees, just warm to the touch. If it's a little cooler, it'll just take longer for the yeast to get activated. So I'm gonna let that sit and I'll let you take a look at what it looks like now and when it's active. So here we have our water, yeast, and sugar mixture. Nothing really happening yet. Um, I'll check back on it in a couple minutes and show you what that looks like once it's active. to show you the yeast blooming and blossoming and it kind of actually just puffs up and um, it's really neat to watch. I think it is really sometimes dorky. So once your yeast water flour mixture, no, sugar mixture looks that way, then it's time to add the flour. So five to six cups roughly. Um, you want to start with five and then see what your dough is like. If it's too sticky, add a little bit more, maybe six six and a half cups max. So two, I have to count so I don't forget. Three, four, five. And I've made this so many times that I usually stick to around five and a half cups. After that, I'm gonna add about two and a half teaspoons of salt. And I use sea salt just because and that's it so my mixer is very loud I've had it for a long time and it's always been loud but I love the color so I won't um, make you listen to the terrible sound that it makes um, if you don't have a stand mixer with a dough hook then you can knead it by hand it'll just take a little bit longer uh, I love using my KitchenAid. I use it at least once a day. It's kind of sick how much I use it. So, um, I'll just let you watch. You don't even need to watch. You know what it mixing looks like. I'll let you see the finished product and when it all mixes together. Right now we just have the wet with the dry on top. So aside from my mixer being incredibly loud, the locking mechanism on the plate in the bottom is broken, so sometimes the bowl gets a little wonky. So once it gets to this point where it's kind of a shaggy dough and I can kind of just press everything together, I'll kind of work it with my hands into a ball and knead it for a little bit more with my hands. Usually I'll take it out, but you get the idea. Okay, I'm back and 
When I said rise, I meant rest. So you let the dough rest for about 15 minutes. Next, we will let it rise. So I cut it in half because it will make two uh, loaves. I use a pizza cutter. You can use whatever you want. And we're gonna roll it out. So, need your rolling pin. It, um, you don't usually need any more flour because of the olive oil. So, it gets kind of slippery. So you wanna roll it into a rectangle. It doesn't have to be perfect. So I have it in a rectangle. I'm gonna just kind of angle this down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. Like I said, it's not perfect. So you want to start off, you're rolling it in, and as you're doing that, you're tucking these edges in. So it will be a long, thin loaf, like a French, like a baguette. Okay, so I'm kind of tucking the ends in as I roll, if that makes sense. And then you'll have a seam here you kind of pinch it together. And I usually kind of give it one last little roll. So you know everything's nice and tidy. And you do the same thing with the second one. I'm not a professional baker, so it's never perfect, but they always taste good. That's that. I lined a cookie sheet with parchment paper. And sometimes if you're lucky they fit. Sometimes you kind of have to wiggle them to make them fit. And there you go. Now you're gonna sit let this sit and rise for again it depends on the temperature of your kitchen. You're looking at usually about half hour, 45 minutes, sometimes an hour, if it's really cool. Um, I'll check back on this in a half hour or so and see, but usually it's more like 45 minutes. But cover it with a dish towel and just let it sit. So it's been 45 minutes or an hour. Um, the bread's doubled, as you can see. The last step here is to score the bread. So you know those classic slits you see in a baguette? Super simple, just take the edge of a knife and that's all you do. There's no real trick to it. That's it. What I like to do is get it a little brown and, and crispy on the outside is, I'm just gonna try to give you a better angle here, sorry for the, because I do just, an egg wash lay on top. And that's it. So you want to put it in a preheated 400 degree oven for about 17 to 20 minutes. Usually I uh, do it closer to 20. My oven is just doesn't heat as fast as my old one did but I also like the tops to be a bit brown. So you can do an egg wash on top. If you're trying to make a vegan bread, you can actually do olive oil or a, a vegan butter even would be nice on top to give it some color. And that's it.
pop it in the oven. I'll show you what it's like when it's done. And here is our finished product. It got, I uh, separated them, so it's got a little ripped, but that's okay. They um, have a nice, a little bit of a crust on top and they're super soft and delicious. And even my picky children love this recipe. The hands-on time is not very long, so I feel like anyone can do it. So I hope that helps. If you're thinking about making bread or uh, trying something new, I just wanted to encourage you to try it and do it. The worst thing that can happen is it doesn't turn out and you try again next time. If you have any questions, I'm not an expert, but I do bake a lot and I have been baking a while. I'd be happy to answer them, so feel free to comment below. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.